This is a Terramaster NAS. And this is a Terramaster NAS. And I have two more behind me that you can't see, but over the course of the past year or so, Terramaster has sent me four of these devices for review. This is gonna be the first video I've created on any of these NAS devices. And the reason for that is because I wanted to wait to see if the NAS got any better. And over the course of the past year or so, it has. The first NAS they sent me shipped with TOS 4. Unfortunately, that was not the best NAS operating system. TOS 5 is a lot better, but it's not where it needs to be. In this video, we're gonna fix it. We're gonna look at why the NAS operating system is not good, why most people don't consider it, and then we're gonna go through exactly how we could fix it to make it a competitor in this space. So phase one of this is addition by subtraction. There is way too much on this operating system, and we need to get rid of 85% of it. You cannot be wasting your development time on things that most people will not use. If you think of what a NAS is, it's network attached storage. Until your storage pool, volume, and file services are rock solid, you gotta get rid of all of this other stuff because you cannot waste time from a development perspective on any of it. There is so much here, so many backup tools and multimedia servers and surveillance managers, all stuff that most people that buy NAS devices do not want. There are also things that are big problems, like VirtualBox, for example. If you open up VirtualBox and you log into it and you set up a virtual machine and you access the console, it uses Flash. Flash, Flash was deprecated in 2020. I understand that you did not develop the actual VirtualBox application, but it's on your operating system and you are responsible for it. So willingly, you are allowing an application to be installed where it requires and has a dependency on Flash, something that has been deprecated for over three years and is a massive security vulnerability. You need to get rid of it, get it out. A lot of this other stuff like deduplication manager, for example. That's something that you shouldn't be making users install. Either make your applications use deduplication or don't, but don't make it something that users have to go through and install because they're probably not gonna know what it even does. If there's a way that you can utilize deduplication, which is an awesome feature, build it into the operating system. Don't make people manually install it. Finally, you offer Docker, which we will get to later, which is very important and I want you to keep it. But you also offer Portainer. Now, Portainer is in this space, one of the kings of Docker management. Why do you have your own Docker GUI? You have Portainer, you're up on the competition in that regard. It's better than Synology's Container Manager. If I had to pick between Portainer and Synology's Container Manager, I'm picking Portainer. So you have a leg up in that area. But the fact that you have a Docker Container Manager as well, kind of discredits that because people might install Docker and then try and use that and it's just gonna become a mess because while it works, it's not where it needs to be and it's not even close to Portainer. So what do you do? You can do one of two things. You can install Docker, when a user installs Portainer and make Portainer the front end interface for your Docker engine. The second thing is you can have a separate Docker engine app if you really want to and make users install both so that they know there is a difference between both. But the key here is stop wasting development time on this Docker GUI that you don't need to be using. You have a better solution right here, use it. There are a few tools that we're gonna keep, which I think are important, but they're gonna be very few and far between. The first is Cloud Sync, because I think it's important to have a tool that your users can utilize to sync data to and from the NAS and Duple Backup, which is basically a backup software. It's in beta. It's been in beta for, I think, since TOS 5 has come out. The reason for that is because most likely you've been spending countless hours in development working on this other stuff that's just not that important in comparison to something like Duple Backup which will actually allow you to back up your data offsite, which is extremely important for a NAS. All of this other stuff, I'm not exaggerating. I really think all of it, you gotta get rid of it. Get rid of it 
and move on to phase two, which is ensuring that the storage pool, volume, snapshots, and file services are rock solid. The reason this is not phase one is because if you can get rid of all those applications, you'll be able to devote more developer resources to this core functionality. A NAS is network attached storage. Right now, while you can utilize TOS as a NAS operating system, it's not as reliable as it needs to be, especially compared to the competitors. This is core functionality. You have to make it rock solid. You should never be in a situation where you restore a snapshot and get an error. You should never be in a situation where you go to create a shared folder and get an error. Now, this has happened to me in the past. I can't say it has happened to me in this version of TOS because these are, for the most part, pretty random errors. They don't occur all the time. But the problem is they have occurred and you have to make sure that they don't occur moving forward. So phase two in this is devote all of your developer resources to those four functions, that's it. With that comes operating system stability. So those four things along with operating system stability is phase two. As soon as that's done, what you're gonna do is focus on cloud sync and Drupal backup to make sure that they are rock solid as well. And what you now have is a suite of tools from a data integrity perspective that will allow users to safely purchase this device and feel comfortable storing their important data on it. This can't be overstated because if you can store data on the NAS, you can access that data through different file services and you have some type of data integrity protection like snapshots. And then if you have different tools that will allow you to back up the data to a separate device, you will feel comfortable keeping it on. And that is the core of what a NAS operating system needs. So at this point, you should have a bare bones NAS operating system that is rock solid from a data storage and integrity perspective that also allows you to back up the data offsite. Phase three is going to be introducing those applications back into the rotation. Now, you have two paths you could take. The first is gonna be my recommendation and where I think that you should start before you focus on any other pass, but I understand your business, it's up to you. So what I would want is that your App Center gets repurposed. The App Center is going to be one-click Docker containers. So when you go and you search for Nextcloud, for example, don't build a Nextcloud package. Don't you know try to install it on the base operating system. Pre-configure the Docker container so that when you click it, it can be accessed through Portainer, it can be managed through Portainer, and you are opening yourself up to a world of Docker containers that you don't have to spend development time or resources on. And there's a lot of these that most people actually want to install. So for example, if you want to install Plex, why do you need to build your own package for it? Just pre-configure the Plex Docker container, set it up, you'll have the leg up on the competition because in that case, if you pre-configure it, you can utilize things like hardware transcoding by default. You don't have to ask your users to configure it. This can be done for everything, for your media servers, for backups, for all these other applications, WordPress. You wanna install WordPress? Fine, set up the Docker container. I mean, there's just so much here that you can really utilize without actually spending any development time on. You also then don't have to spend development resources to maintain these applications. So that's my preferred approach. If you don't wanna do it, fine. You can start to slowly introduce some of these other applications that truthfully, I don't consider to be particularly important, like Terraphotos. Terraphotos, I'm sure, is a Google Photos competitor. Um, and, you know, if you can get it to a point where it competes with Google Photos, that's great. But you have to spend the development resources and time to do that. So I'm not trying to say that you can never, ever have any first-party applications. I get it. You're building a NAS operating system and you want applications that come along with it. But these are all nice-to-haves. For most people, they want a core NAS that functions as expected they're comfortable leaving their data on it. And all of this is just nice to have stuff where they've configured the NAS to do its 
primary job and are saying, hey, I could do some of the secondary stuff as well. So rather than, you know, bashing the operating system, and and if any of this came out that way, I, I really didn't mean to take that approach, but I'm kind of passionate about this stuff. And I want this to actually succeed. I don't want to get on here and say that, you know, great hardware, but the software is lacking. There's a ton of videos like that already. And I don't want to take that path because I really do think that you can make this into something that's great. And I think if you take some of this, I'm not expecting you to actually follow this, but I think if you take some of these points and you really objectively look at what you're doing and what you can do, you'll see that rather than trying to enhance 150 different things at the same time, if you focus on the core functionality that most users actually want, you'll get much further. I mean, there's a reason why NAS devices, the, the most sold NAS devices are two bay NASs. Most people wouldn't think that. They think that probably the four bay would be. And while I'm sure it's a close second, most people have two bay NAS devices. They don't have these massive storage pools they want to store their, their documents on and then just kind of leave it in the corner and make sure it works. So if you look at it from the perspective that the data integrity will be good, you're going to get a ton of customers just on that. You're already beating the competition from a price perspective. You're at least on par or in some cases much better than the competition in terms of hardware. This is the only thing holding you back. So I think if you take this feedback, and that's what it is, is feedback, these devices can be great. So if you've made it this far, comment if you're a consumer and if any of these changes would actually make you consider any of these devices. But I'm hopeful that this feedback actually is somewhat taken into consideration. I don't even know if you'll watch this video. But if you did, thank you for watching. If you're just watching to see what I do to this NAS operating system, thank you for watching as well. Um, if you like this type of content, this is very different from what I normally do give it a thumbs up. And if you don't, give it a thumbs down so that I know not to ever create content like this again. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.